is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber. Good morning. Very welcome to this morning's uh, meeting of the Infrastructure Committee. Obviously, advise all of you now that we're back in the chamber today just to maintain your social distancing just throughout the meeting. Today, we will consider subordinate legislation. Um, we'll have that in I'm sure I'm difficultly hearing. You may need to turn your mic. Oh, sorry. Not working. No. Okay, so um, today we'll consider the subordinate legislation and then the committee inquiry into the decarbonisation of rural transport in Northern Ireland. And then we'll have a, a briefing from the department um, in relation to reservoirs. No one is coming to us remotely today. So, okay. So apologies. Apologies to note. Um, moving then to Chairman's business at page um, five of the clerk's memo regarding the joint meeting on the 24th of March with the Committee for the Economy and the Committee for Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs. So we just need to discuss very briefly um, the manner in which we wish to organise the committee questioning. Members have given any consideration to it or if you just want to pop your hands up now and I'll take you in the order that you indicate. <laughs> that will be as far as other. Okay, Mr. Buchanan, Mr. Boylan. Joint committee. You want to indicate, and we'll take it in that way, Polly. What's your preference in terms of questions? Mr. Beggs, do you want to ask a question next week? Oh yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mr. Hildred, are you picking me out? Um, <laughs> everybody's been a bit slow this morning. Could, could everybody? Uh, yeah, yes. Could okay. everybody respond like right? Oh yes. <laughs> okay, um, so it'll, that's the order we'll take them if that if you're content, yep. um, mm -hmm. and then Dolores and Liz whenever they arrive, whoever indicates first. I think it's just as random as that. I think mm -hmm. if you're content to do that, I think what we will end up with is obviously the other committees are also going to be asking in their order. So oh, there's, there's um, Dolores isn't joining us in person. Okay. Um, okay. Dolores, do you want to indicate then to ask a question next week? Um, I don't know. Yeah, probably put it down anyway, sure. I can always withdraw. Probably easier to yeah. withdraw. Okay, yeah, well, it's just as, it's going to be quite random, I think, anyway, because other committees will be asking in the, will be asked in a different order. So you know, it's very likely that the questions will be answered when there are just so many of it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Sure, I'm happy to, if need be, maybe get a supplementary if there's something that crops up, you know, if that makes it easier from a management point of view, chairing the meeting. I'm not, I'm not sure that it's going to work that way next week, to be honest, no, because no, it right, will okay. be, um, Economy, obviously, you're chairing, and then ourselves and um, Dara then are deputies to that. So I'm really only facilitating the <coughs> order then for our members. So I'll then call you just at the appropriate time. So I suppose at that stage, if you want to say, you know, it doesn't, I'm not interested, or I've had a question answered or whatever, then we can do that. But we'll just play it. By, we'll play it by ear, I suppose, at that stage. So right, that's our order organised. So thank you for that. Um, <laughs> Moving then to draft minutes at page eight of the meeting of the 3rd of March, are members content? Matters arising at page 19, again from the same meeting of the 3rd of March. Members have any issues that they wish to raise on the back of that meeting? It was programme for government and um, construction. No, nope. okay. Page 24, we have our outstanding request for information. Again, if members have anything you want to highlight or indicate, no. Nope. Correspondence, uh, just draw your attention to the correspondence memo at page 40 and tabled at page 3. Anybody wish to make any comment? There was a response from the Minister um, at page 111 around a number of issues uh, that we'd raised on the 17th of February. Uh, Mr Muir? Yeah, thanks. Uh, uh, two issues. I'll deal with the first one, which was under 5.8, which is correspondence, generally outlining the concerns about the downturn in trade um, for those involved in maintenance of vehicles uh, as a result of the suspension of MOTs. I think it would be important to 
raise those concerns with our minister around that. Obviously, there is a legal obligation uh, upon people to ensure that their vehicle is roadworthy. Uh, but they, I know, even from my own experience, that this has resulted in a real downturn in trade for those uh, businesses. And we're finding a way to be able to give them support. And we also need to understand what is the long-term plan now for the resumption of MOTs as part of the roadmap. Great. No, this this correspondence link was sent to all members, including the minister as well. Um, but content with that, um, Miss Anderson. A different matter. Yeah. Um, on the ministry response to, uh, to unadapted roads, we had a discussion here, and we know that the committee had done extensive work uh, in a previous mandate. We also know that there is a review taking place into planning and we had raised it with the officials about this matter um, being reflected in the, the planning review. I know, like other MLAs in my own constituency in Derry, there are 222 unadopted roads and there's 12.5 million of bonds. And it's the same for other constituencies because I got, I got a breakdown. So I think um, it is something that we need to ensure that developers just don't go from one um, development to another and leave behind a trail of destruction. I think this is something that the minister has inherited, and I think it's something that the minister could take forward in the planning review, so that, for instance, when there is, whether it's a housing development, each stage that we have sewage completed as well as the roads before moving into another and by the time the entire estate is finished if it's not adopted then they shouldn't be allowed to move to another um, estate until that one's done for instance so we need some kind of robust mechanism to ensure that people aren't buying houses and then left in such states or renting property Okay. Uh, in the same manner. Are, member, are members content that we uh, we agree to have the uh, the relevant officials then come to brief the committee in relation to this? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Mr. Boylan. Yeah, sure. Just uh, following on from what Andrew said, I know there's a correspondence there, page 107, in relation to MOT and uh, vehicle upkeep. I mean, um, there is concerns there. People can't get booking MOTs, and if you read that uh, letter, I'm not I'm not attempt to pronounce her surname, but it's from day on there, 107, mm. in relation to vehicle upkeep and in relation to MOTs in general. And I think we need to write to the Minister to see what, how we're getting the message out, what we're exactly we're doing, because mm. there are vehicles now past the year, the exemption certificates have gone, and I mean, it's important to keep your vehicle road worthy, and some of those vehicles now can't drive on the road if you, if you don't get your test. You know, you're not supposed to be on the road at all. So we need to ask the Minister what preparations are in place mm. to get the MOTs up and going to get those vehicles done and also get the message out a bit generally, the, you know, the, the way your vehicle is looked after, you know what I mean? So yeah. I'd like to hear from the Minister in relation to that. And I think there's a, there's a misunderstanding with folk around the date of their MOT that they still think that they've a, they've a bit of leverage, um, the other side of a, a date, which of course they don't have. No, absolutely. Um, so I think it, probably quite a, a clear message needs to come from, from the department and, um, and obviously the minister would be fit to do that um, with regards to, to roadworthiness. And I, I know that's been a message that has been coming out really consistently since last January, whenever we started to have the issues around the MOT. But whether or not then it's heated or not is another, another thing. Well, the important thing, Chair, is people, once the certificate's up, your, the exemption's up, the vehicle shouldn't be on the road. Well, so right. I don't know what that message is. But according to, to Diane, they're obviously very concerned with some of the stuff yeah. she's dealt with. So, um, yeah, we need to hear a message from the Minister, obviously. OK. Uh, Mr Becks. On, on the same issue, I think it would be helpful if we had a, an accurate assessment of the current uh, numbers that are actually capable of being tested under the model that is being used, um, because there still is this pressure of getting a slot. So yeah. um, there needs to be appropriate planning, whether that is if there's limitations in, in, in the flow of vehicles due to uh, COVID restrictions. Uh, how are the department extending ours? How are they trying to ensure that more can be tested and that there are slots available for road users who actually need their slot? Um, we we'll have to remember this is about uh, ensuring road safety on the road, and uh, in the absence of such tests, not only can people be inconvenienced, but uh, that there are risks. Yeah. And not all the slots seem to be um, released at the same time. You know, because you can look 
and there are nothing and then within 10 minutes or so if you keep trying then you know, maybe 10 or 12 then seem to pop up so there seems to be um, a strange way in which they're, re they're releasing um, MOT Slash. appointments and which just makes it very difficult for people maybe who don't all have access um, to online booking either. Ms Kimmins. Chair, it's separate issues. Is that okay? Just in the correspondence, we can move on. Yeah. So it's, it's just two issues um, in relation to the the correspondence there regarding the bus and coach operator scheme. I think, um, and it, it it is disappointing that meetings haven't happened since the final design of the scheme um, was was announced. And I'd say that I think it's important that that we, as a committee, ask the department to ensure that the third rollout of the scheme addresses. The issues that have been continually raised, I know from speaking to um, representatives from from the sector, that you know there's still there's, between the first and second schemes there's been very little change, um, and there are start there are still a lot of outstanding issues. So it's just to to mention that, and I think that's something that we need the minister and, and officials to take on board. The second one is around the um, the response to do with the the infrastructure projects for the seaports, and I think it is very disappointing that. Um, that, we, that the department decided not to go ahead with the bids because I know from speaking, particularly to Warren Point Port in, in my own area, that um, the turnaround time to try and get those business cases in was very short, um, and there was a lot of work went into that. And then to simply be told by by officials that uh, that it wasn't going forward um, was really disappointing, particularly when we know there was there was underspends there, um, and, and and something that has come back is in relation to the harbour spill. Um, we, we know that it went through by accelerated passage, so um, from what I know, the, the information come back was that they had to wait for royal assent on that, so it's just to find out why um, why that has happened. Um, you know, it, What is the point in having accelerated passage when there's going to be delays to do with things like that? So I just wanted to put that on the record, and I think if we could get an answer even in terms of the harbour spill, it would be helpful. Just for clarification, what are you looking for with regards to the harbour spill? The, from, from what I can gather, they said that the, the officials have said that the harbour spill, even though it went through accelerated passage, um, that they're still waiting on royal assent in relation to that. So it was just to find out what were the delays and, and, and why that we're waiting on that, even though it's gone through an accelerated passage, because surely that was to try and get things moving um, much quicker. Yeah, but that, I suppose that's just still part of the legislative process, um, and that would be the same for, for any bill going through the Assembly that then has to go through that final process, which is obviously out with the hands of the, the Assembly. Okay. Okay, no, that's fair enough. Thank you, Chair. Okay, Mr. Muir. Thanks. Uh, just on page 113, which is, I think, 510, which is the letter from the Minister, which some of us have been referring to, um, it refers to the resourcing within the department and the different business units. Um, and this has been an ongoing issue that's been coming up in terms of the ability for the department to be able to take forward projects and deliver, particularly around um, the roads maintenance and stuff like that. So I think it would be useful to go back to the department and ask them what their workforce strategy is um, and how they're working to, to deal with these res resourcing issues, because this is a recurrent issue. So we want it, it would be good to know what their workforce strategy is. I know this is something that's came up in PAC in terms of the need for the civil service to have to be addressing capacity and capability within there. Okay. Anyone else? Any other issues at this stage before we move on, Ms. Anderson? Um, I just want to reiterate what my colleague said around the um, coach and bus operators. I'm sure, like others, I have been contacted by, by a number of them, and some of them feel they've had access. Others have feel, feel they've had no access at all, and those who have had access don't feel that they were listened to. So even though we've had the response uh, from the minister, it's certainly one that the sector is not very pleased about. But, uh, Chair, just in, on page 113, um, item number six, I, I just think it's a very scant response, and I'm not sure that, um, that it satisfies what we were looking for with regards to the correspondence that we had received from Phoenix Law in relation to the financial assistance for taxi operators. Because the Minister is acknowledging the Committee's comments regarding the, co uh, the correspondence, and she reiterates her previous response regarding the position in respect of financial assistance. Um, and then she goes on to say, including FIA, the Department for Economies, Part B of the CBRSS. So I'm just not so sure what that actually means. Like she's, she is reiterating her previous response. 
um, but I don't know if it means that they're being directed towards the Department of Economy. Well, if members because are maybe what we could do is to, obviously this correspondence came to us as well, that we go back to the taxi operators who contacted us um, just to ascertain what the response was that they had received. Um, and we could maybe follow up on the back of that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Just one last issue. Um, page 114 and item 8, it outlines the engagement the Minister's had in our department around the Union Connectivity Review. I have obviously heard some information in the news this morning in terms of what the outcome of that review is. I think it would be useful if the committee could, at its next meeting, get a bit of an overview in terms of what is the outworkings of that review, because obviously all we have heard this morning is what has been reported. Um, I think you know, it is important, from my own perspective, um, to welcome you know, anything in, in terms of the upgrade of the A75. It is a very dangerous road. But to be continuing wasting money on something that's never going to happen, such as a bridge or a, a tunnel, um, when there's so many other uh, capital investment projects that need to be funded here in Northern Ireland, I think it's important that we as a committee have a say in this and we're briefed on what the review is actually saying. Okay. Okay. Content? Yeah. Okay. Uh, are there any other issues that you wish to discuss in correspondence? If not, um, if you're, you can agree, then what has been indicated as a manner of dealing with this as per um, the memo. Okay, moving <coughs> then on to <coughs> item six, the subordinate legislation, which is not subject to assembly proceedings. So at page uh, 126, we have SL1, parking places, loading bays and waiting restrictions, Cool Rain Amendment Order, Northern Ireland 2021. At page 129, we have SL1, the parking and waiting restrictions, Carrick Fergus Amendment Order, Northern Ireland 2021. The two proposals for statutory rules set new parking and waiting restrictions in areas of both Cool Rain and Carrick Fergus. As said, the proposals are not subject to assembly proceedings. Are members content with the proposals for the statutory rules? Thank you. Okay. Item 7, which is SR 2021 49, the Ballyboley Road, <coughs> Lauren Abandonment Order, Northern Ireland 2021, page 132. Uh, we considered this proposal for the rule on the 17th of February and we're content at that stage. There to be no change to the policy content since the proposal was subject submitted to the committee and the rule is subject to negative resolution. Are members content with this rule? Yeah. That the Committee for Infrastructure has considered SR 2021 49, the Ballyboley Road, Lorne Abandonment Order, Northern Ireland 2021, and subject to the examiner of statutory rules, has no objection to the rule. Great. Moving then to item 8, which is the committee inquiry into the decarbonisation of road transport in Northern Ireland. Um, so we've got a consideration for our consideration here. We have a draft. Um, e-car survey. So this is just a draft of the questions for the survey, which we hope to publish on Monday, the fifteenth of March. Um, obviously, the questions are being finalised just to fit with an online survey and, and the format um, of that. Mr. Boylan. Yeah, Chair. I mean, um, I agree with the approach. It's just how we get it out there. I know we're doing online. How do we get a much target audience as possible, just to get the message out? And also I see, um, and it's only a suggestion maybe, in Section 3 there are talks about grants, but I know, I know in Scotland as part of their model they offered interest-free loans as well. I don't know where we considered that. or was That might it? be something that we want to consider whenever we're doing our deliberations around all of this. Okay, I'm just, I'm just seeing that on that. All right. Okay. Mr. Muir. Thanks. Uh, I think it's a good um, questionnaire, and as, sort of, as Carl said, it's about getting it out there to make sure people are feeding that into our inquiry. Just two things. In section four, um, it's about how we travel and how COVID has changed that. I think it would be useful to ask people in that, you know, um, has COVID 19 changed how often they're travelling by car? So whether there's been an increase or a decrease? And also, um, do they expect to work from home a lot more in the aftermath of COVID 19? Because obviously that's going to have an impact upon <coughs> travel habits as well. Okay. Um, I, I know sure. that uh, Mr. Look at your marriage um, gauge. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, David. All right. Good, right. Just, a, just a comment on page 140, <coughs> section 2. It, it's asking you for question 6 here. What do you consider the main benefits of EV? Pick 3. Is there any beneficial change in that to 
one, two, three, as in which is your more importance or not? It's just a sort of a, I'm throwing it as an open question. You know, you're picking three. Or do you need to wait them? In other words, if you ask for one, two, and three, it's just a comment, and it's the same principle on, on other questions. Mm -hmm. If you look at saying pick three, mm -hmm. do you need to wait the strength that you put on number one, two, and three, or in order of your importance, or is it just three you're picking, so therefore they're equal strength? I, I don't know. It's just it depends a, on how this is being yeah, collated, I suppose, because then people will do one to ten or whatever yeah. the options are. I don't know whether that's what um, Des is looking for. I suppose it depends on how he's. Depends what you want to get out of it. If you want to get, the, the, you know, yeah. people's more important is one, two, and three. Yeah. Any, any, any Mr. Hildage? No, it's fine. Anyone else at this stage content? Um, obviously, there's cause there's a bit of work going on um, with engagement to look at how this will be done through social media and on the, the various platforms through the assembly. So mm. we're content to leave that uh, with. Um, the team, um, along with Des, um, to, to move forward. Okay. Just sorry, just one more point. Apologies. Question thirty-two. It says here require all petrol stations to have three charging points. I know that's what you're. You know, I don't know if that's the right terminology. You're putting up an electric charging point at a petrol station. It's sort of defeating. It's, it's just a, a, a an impactful thing. I saw. If you want to change the term petrol station to someone different, I think it sounds wrong. That's all. It's just to encourage them then to go in and shop. You it's say. just constructive <laughs> criticism, not criticism. <laughs> it's supposed to give them a point to go to because if you're, if you're encouraging them away from petrol stations. Go and buy some chocolate and flowers and stuff. Obviously, I'll charge it. You love going to the diesel station, then you just go to the petrol one, yeah. <laughs> the fuel station. <laughs> fuel station, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. Okay. Um, moving then to our, our draft work program um, at page 149. So we have, um, obviously, next week we aren't here, um, it's St Patrick's Day, um, and then the 24th we have the Joint Committee, um, and then we have Easter recess, and then when we come back in April we have um, pencilled in um, briefings from Nilga and also from the Minister, so if you're content with that. Okay. okay so um, the next um, meeting will take place at... Um, 10 a.m. on the 24th of March in the Senate Chamber um, to meet concurrently with the Committees for Agriculture and the Economy. At this stage, the Committee will now move into closed session. Thank you. The Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber programme signed.